Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time to talk today in history, and I'm going back to the year 2003 to uh, talk about a, a girl. Her name was uh, Elizabeth Smart. She was abducted from her home in the year 2002 while her sister pretended to be asleep. So there, were, uh, there was a couple... The first one, the guy was named uh, David, and he, he and his wife had done some construction work in Elizabeth Smart's house, and they came there later to abduct Elizabeth Smart. Uh, it's not clear for whatever reason, you know, they had kidnapped her. His name was Brian David Michel, and his wife was called Wanda Bazi. They went to a house in the night, kidnapped her while her sister was asleep, and uh, they took her to the woods. Bazi, Brian David Mitchell, was a self-styled prophet. He said he was a pastor, and uh, he would dress Elizabeth Smart in long white robes and take her on his crusades and his camping missions and camping trips, preaching to people. But he had, you know, a girl who he kidnapped as part of his cast and crew, so to speak. So he forced Elizabeth into a polygamous marriage because he was married at the time. He raped her, tortured her, locked her in a room, and she was there for nine months. She said she would be there for, for sometimes days without even having water to drink. And she mentioned that there was one time she was so thirsty, and she woke up the next day, she saw cold water, and she believed that, you know, that was God trying to save her life. So anyway, um, Mitchell would dress her in these white robes, like I mentioned, and take her around, you know, for their crusades and, you know, preaching campaigns. And one of those days, nine months after he kidnapped her, you know, someone spotted her, and that's how she was basically rescued from the hand of this self-styled prophet. They were arrested and uh, sentenced to jail. I think um, the wife, she... She was released at the age of 73 many years later, but uh, Mitchell was, was, was basically sent to life in prison. Uh, but the good thing about the story of Elizabeth Smart is that she took her experience. It was a very sad experience, but she took it as you know, an inspiration to, to people. And she began to collaborate with the United States Justice Department, and she formed, uh, helped them to create a guide to help people who have been kidnapped. Yeah. She, be she became an activist, you know, preaching against these, these things. You know, she became sort of an idol. Now she's a commentator for, uh, for a TV station in in uh, the, the United States of America. Lots of books have been written about her life. Lots of movies and documentaries have been written about her life. People idolize her for you know, everything she went through and how she came out of it you know, with her success story, willing to help other people you know, who might end up being in a situation in the future. So that's the story of Elizabeth Smart. This day in history, March 12, 2003, Smart, Elizabeth Smart was found after being missing for nine months. It's a very interesting story. Um, the only smart I know is smart at the Emmy. Um, <laughs> but, no, yeah, you know, you know someone else. <laughs> but I, I mean, I just, it's not a name that I expect to hear from, you know, those, you know, that, well, maybe. Anyway, um, so this, this story basically points two things out for me. First of all, it's the um, who the gods want to kill, the first of all, make mad. Uh, because it, it makes absolutely no sense for you to kidnap someone and then walk <laughs> around you know, with them on, on the and streets. And you're a pastor. And you're a pastor. And that's the second point, actually. Uh, the reason there's uh, more and more people who you know, would be losing interest in religion and whatever it is that you're preaching these days because you know, the examples or the people who should be you know, living uh, and their lives should be examples aren't doing very, very well across the world. Um, here in Nigeria and in other parts of the, of the country, you hear people who are supposedly religious leaders in, in every type of religion doing some of the worst things ever. And so it makes you really, really think, what, like, what you know, um, value does the religion that you're preaching really hold? Um, so there's those two things I want to quickly uh, mention um, on it, that story. It was so weird, really. No, definitely Really, weird. really weird. Definitely weird. Kidnap her and you take her out, you know, string her along. Your, your sermons. Yeah. What, what did you? What do you then preach when you <laughs> <laughs> when you broke into someone's house in the night and kidnapped her? Weird. You needed an intern or a let's, PA? You probably needed an intern, <laughs> um, but he didn't want to pay uh, for one. Let, let, let's let's now move to 2019. This this one made headlines across the United States and in other parts of the world, and mostly because it, it was um, it, it, it basically had two very very popular people actresses. Uh, Lori Loughlin and Felicity Hoffman. 
Uh, they were involved in a very, very messy scandal. It, uh, it was on, on this day in 2019 that dozens were charged in a U.S. college admission scandal by federal prosecutors, including those two actresses that I already mentioned. Um, they, of course, charged both of them in what the Justice Department said was a multi-million dollar scheme to cheat college admissions uh, uh, standards. Uh, I'm going to bring it down here to Nigeria in a bit. The parents allegedly paid a consultant who then fabricated academic and athletic credentials and arranged bribes uh, to help get their children into uh, colleges in the United States, such as Stanford and Yale. There's uh, so, so about 33 pay parents who paid enormous sums, some of them 100000 to 400000 to, of course, millions of dollars to this particular consultant to help get them get their kids into school. A judge in Los Angeles ruled that Hoffman uh, could be released on $250,000 bond, and Laughlin's husband, uh, fashion designer, Mosimo Giannulli, was released on $1 million bond. The scheme operated from 2011 to February 2019, before it was eventually busted, and um, you know, um, every, everyone found out about it. Um, Hoffman, Felicity Hoffman and her husband, William H. Macy, paid $15,000 to get one of their daughters on limited time for her SAT test, prosecutors said. It went on and on and on. It was really messy. But it was on this day that they were all, um, you know, outed. And, of course, they were charged in the U.S. college admission scandal. Mm -hmm. So my own two angles that I always like to throw in here, first of all, of all is the part where this would not necessarily be such a scandal here in Nigeria uh, because we grew up or we've grown up in a country where some of these things happen and they're seen as normal. We grew up in a, in a, in a country where parents pay for um, special centers for their kids to write WIAC. We grew up in a country where parents pay for special centers for JAM so that their kids can have maybe, you know, lecturers or whoever it is, you know, to write the exams for them to get, you know, to pass. We grew up in a country where it was two days ago, someone was crying out that she was uh, uh, posted to Kano or some state in the north. And she and paid, paid 65,000 naira to some agent to help her, you know, get redeployed to, of course, but Lagos. she ended up Abuja, in Adamawa State. Yeah, uh, Adamawa, yes. <laughs> where I served, um, by the way. So this is, this is kind of a normal for us here in Nigeria. It wouldn't be such a huge scandal. You know, we always like to seek these type of favors. The ones that we can pay for, we pay for. The ones that, you know, maybe we would use, you know, relationships with people, the VCs, my uncle, those type of favors we'll definitely do. Everybody but, talks about but, the long leg. The absolutely. Connection. But, but, but in, the, in the United States, it's a totally different picture. And that's why it became, you know, such a scandal. Yeah. But the second point that I'm going to make okay. is um, this scandal um, and the fact that they were released on $250,000 uh, bond, the other one was released on a million dollars bond, um, created more and more uh, discussions about racism and white privilege mm -hmm. and the fact that there's people in the United States that have done, black people, colored people in the United States that have done Far less. Far less that have to spend two, three, four, five, maybe ten years in jail. There are people who have been sent to jail in, you know, acts that were pretty obviously self-defense. There's a woman, a black woman, who was sent to jail because she wrote her father's address um, on, on a form for her child instead of her own address um, because she wanted her child to go to a better school than the one that was in her district. And she was sent to jail for that, just for writing that address. Um, so, yeah, those two points I wanted to quickly okay, throw Okay, so I want to throw in um, Hoffman's quote here. She said, in my desperation to be a good mother, I talked myself into believing that all I was doing was giving my daughter a fair shot. I see the irony in that statement now because what I have done is the opposite of fair. I have broken the law, deceived the educational community, betrayed my daughter, and failed my family. So, anyway, so she apologized and uh, she's out free now. Still a criminal. All right, that's all we have for you today in history, 2019 and the year 2003. Yeah. We're going to a short break, and when we come back, we're talking Shea Gumi and the federal government.